It's a good looking group. Thank you for your leadership, everyone. All right, with that, Makesh, I think you and I are sliding out and you guys are going to continue for a panel. I thank you once again. So proud and nice job. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you and congratulations once again to all of our awardees. Now, please welcome Mr. Nick Deegan, CEO of the Americas and U.S. Senior Partner at the Brunswick Group to launch our panel discussion with the awardees. Thank you, Scott, and uh, thank you, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Let's wait here a second. There you go. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you, Scott, and uh, delight, delighted to be with uh, such an August group. Uh, I wanted to add my uh, hearty congratulations uh, to Chandra, Raj, and Puneet. It's, uh, it's been really remarkable to see what you all have accomplished. And just want to echo as well John's remarks about USISPF and, and what Gaurav and Mukesh have done. Uh, I'm Nikhil Diogan. I'm CEO of the Americas for Brunswick. Uh, and I've been uh, also a board member of USISPF and watching what uh, this group has done in conjunction with its members has been nothing short of remarkable. I think the, uh, I wanna add my congratulations to what you have done and, and just listening to all of your remarks, what strikes me most is the humility that you all show and how you really represent the best of uh, the US-India partnership. Because when, uh, when that came, crisis came to pass, Raj, I thought you said it best when you said that there, was, uh, there wasn't ever any doubt that this community would spring together and spring together with real dedication and action. So uh, I don't want to spend the entire time talking about COVID, but I figure we should at least start there. And Raj, if I could start with you, uh, there was a critical moment uh, when uh, when the second wave really hit India, where uh, the community really came together. I would, would, if you don't mind, just describing a little bit that moment because I think it was quite remarkable to see the variety of people who came together. Yeah, thank you, Nick. And again, it's wonderful uh, to see you. And also, thank you very much for your kind remarks. You're one hundred percent right. It was a, you know, it was on a weekend. I remember very clearly where a few of us kind of got together and said, you know, we got to do something urgently here. And within a matter of uh, few twelve, twenty-four hours on a Sunday afternoon, uh, we had a Zoom conference call. I, I bet you it had, uh, you know, the CEOs of. Fortune 50 companies uh, range around and they all readjusted their schedule uh, to come on the call um, to mobilize the efforts. And so what struck me was the, the fact that the team convened so quickly. And then, the, in fact, the very next day, there was actually the similar kind of group uh, met with the U.S. Secretary of State. Uh, again, that, that really uh, talks to the convening power of uh, the U.S. ISPF but it also tells you how important India is to the U.S. business community from a humanitarian perspective, from a business perspective. And I think uh, that uh, conversation helped really figure out uh, a coordination process on what's important and how we go about that. And it's funny, as, as we look ahead, and Punita, I'd love to start this with you. Uh, I think all of us who've seen that partnership in action want to make sure we don't lose that momentum. We want to make sure we we really continue with that same spirit. Uh, and and Puneet, as you think about this, you've mentioned uh, one of the things that struck you was the public-private nature of this and how that's something that uh, you hope will continue. Can you elaborate on that a little bit and talk a little bit about some of the next steps as we hopefully come out of COVID, as things hopefully start to go back to normal, just talk a little bit about the power of that public-private partnership. Well, I mean, COVID uh, stating the obvious was devastating. And we saw that in April and May at very personal levels. My, As I said, my mother got COVID at 81, so it was really personal uh, for me. And I've got 50,000 professionals that call India home. 6% of them were uh, with COVID. So it is our responsibility to make sure that they navigate through this. Um, 
But what COVID also showed us were a couple of things. One, as Raj said, um, the importance of India and how multinational corporations, U.S. domiciled corporations view India uh, so critically I I from an important standpoint. And, and I think the response is testament to that. The second is some of these larger issues, like fighting the pandemic, require global responses that government by themselves can't address. The Sanjeevni Pariyojana example that Deloitte led with uh, Haryana and now is doing it pan-India is, is one such example. And there are other issues um, like climate, for instance, that will require all of us, all of us working together, doing our part in a public-private way, in an ecosystem way, uh, to address these issues. And it's not just uh, getting through navigating the pandemic, climate, uh, income inequality as an example, health equity. These are all issues that will require that joint response. Chandra, com coming to you next, uh, you know, as, uh, as John said, uh, there's no company more synonymous with uh, Indian business success than Tata. And what you have done has been remarkable and, and uh, Full disclosure, as the son of a former Tata executive, I'm, I, I've been I'm uh, so struck by it. And I like Puneet, I just went back to visit my mother and to see how the pride people have in what Tata has done and what Tata did during COVID has been remarkable. And I think if you could talk a little bit about as you come out of COVID, what are some of the things you think will be more permanent and lasting changes either in your business or in the business, the business relationship with government because hopefully this results like in every crisis hopefully we see some things and we change for the better how we do things as well i think a couple of uh, words on the spirit that we could witness uh, at the tata group while at the group central level we formed uh, a core group of all the ceos and started to drive the initiative but what became very apparent is the the DNA of the group where everyone did the right thing, whether it is uh, Tata Steel uh, increasing the capacity from 200 metric tons to 1100 metric tons, almost supply 10% of the oxygen that was needed in the country and uh, importing lots of cryogenic tankers to be able to transport oxygen or Indian hotels employees converting the hotels into COVID wards and risking their lives in serving the patients and the doctors. And you can give uh, many examples. TC is taking the lead in vaccinating hundreds of thousands of employees and all their families across the, across the country. I mean, there are uh, so many examples you can give. I think uh, what's important to me is the necessity and the shortage that we have of the pu public health infrastructure. That was so visible. And I hope that this, this has provided the momentum and that will get addressed as a top national priority. And we look forward to playing our part in participating in making sure that the healthcare system um, nationwide gets addressed. And in terms of uh, many other uh, collaborative efforts that has happened between companies, for example, the, uh, none of us could have imagined uh, a vaccine could have been uh, tried, tested, and launched in 12 months. Normally, the trial will be six, seven years. So how do we leverage this speed and agility in, for the entire uh, needs of other types of healthcare treatments? And this is a very pivotal moment. And we should not miss that opportunity. And we could see how kids in the urban areas could learn, live and shop, and learn through digital means. And a lot of village kids, because for the lack of access to the infrastructure and to the digital devices, lost almost two years of their education life. It is going to make a huge impact, and we're going to feel that. But we should make a resolve to fix that, to provide that kind of uh, infrastructure that is necessary. Same thing, 
is going to happen in global supply chains. We should create a resilient global supply chain. We should move from or change from just in time to just in case supply chains so that the global global uh, system doesn't fail. We all face that problem. I don't want to take specific instances. We all faced issues in the supply chain, not only in terms of our economic activity and businesses and production, but also in procuring medical uh, assistance during the pandemic. So whether it is digital, and also I could witness the effect of sustainability in Pedder Road in Bombay, I could hear the birds chirping in the morning, which I've never experienced before. We could see the sea from both ends of, the, of our balcony. And it, it, it clearly shows that these things can be fixed. I think we should use this opportunity to be able to address all of this. That's a that's a terrific point, Chandra. I sit here in Midtown Manhattan, and I've been coming every every day uh, into the office, and you, you, you the the birds chirping have been replaced by the trucks honking uh, over here uh, yeah. a great deal. Uh, you you mentioned supply chain, and and Raj, no one knows more about this th than you do, and you uh, in your uh, excellent interview, which you and Puneet did uh, with my former colleague Shireen yesterday, uh, you talked a little bit about this, but. Can you just pick up on Chandra's point in terms of how you think, given what we every day we are waking up with more headlines about supply chain difficulties, where do you see the silver lining there? Where do you see how people are uh, are operating? And then, then Puneet, I'd like you to weigh in a little bit after that, also talking about uh, social value and business being a force for good, because I think you've written quite eloquently about that. So, Raj, if I can uh, start with you. Uh, there's no yeah, sure. There's no question that uh, currently the supply chains uh, are, you know, are, are clogged up, and essentially you can see it uh, in the ocean side of the business. And the number of uh, ships that are waiting to unload in the ports uh, are in, in the west coast of the United States, and is a classic example of that. Um, uh, so it's important to. To improve the resilience of supply chains uh, like Chandra was talking about I would just add one other point is it's also important to make the supply chain smarter and I think the tech role of technology here is very very important as I think we can make the uh, you know the the issue with making too much inventory in different places of course the cost is going to go up but I think technology plays a big role in making sure that we have smart supply chains and also uh, supply chains that are uh, that are then more resilient. Uh, let me also play, say, a role here for India. I think there's there's a moment of opportunity here, as uh, you know, a lot of companies are looking to diversify their supply chains, and as as much as possible, this is a great opportunity to manufacture in India for the global market, and to make sure that there is infrastructure in place, whether it is the hard infrastructure. That everyone thinks about, but also the soft infrastructure, and then and, you know remove some of the non-tariff barriers, for example, to make sure uh, that the the process can be very smooth. I'll give you an example. During the pandemic, when our triple seven flights landed in Mumbai, they were unloaded and into the trucks in 45 minutes flat, and the, the customs clearance was paperless, and it was brilliant work. I think that's actually a benchmark for how things can operate even post-pandemic. That's a that's a great segue, Puneet. Before we talk a little about social value, because uh, Raj raised this up, and I know Deloitte just did an excellent uh, study about uh, FDI in India. Uh, I'd I'd love to for you to elaborate a little bit, given what uh, Raj was alluding to in terms of making sure that the ease of business with India continues to improve. What you see as the perception of what the Deloitte research has found in terms of the perception of doing business in India and steps one can take to improve? Well, it was a, a comprehensive study that we just commissioned uh, that looked at investors from the US, Japan, Singapore, um, uh, the European Union. Uh, the interesting data was that uh, even in the midst of a pandemic, uh, the amount of FDI flowing into India was at record levels. That was one takeaway. The second takeaway was most of these investors were not only attracted to India as a place to, to manufacture for uh, export, they were really attracted by the local market, uh, which, I, which should be obvious, uh, but uh, uh, was a really important takeaway. 
The third, and I can go on, I'm not going to spend all my time talking about the FDI study, but the third interesting takeaway was there was a real disconnect between what is happening on the ground, the example that Raj gave around digitization of the customs process, or the repealing of the tax law that was regressive, to the, the, the perception that exists, particularly in Japanese and Singaporean investors, about ease of doing business in India. And I think that needs to be addressed. Now to your question about uh, social good, I found it interesting in uh, listening to the acceptance speeches for Chandra and Raj about the, the notion of purpose. And Deloitte is a purpose-led organization. Our purpose is certainly to create an impact for our clients, to develop the 350,000 people that uh, call Deloitte home, but also to give back to the communities that we live and work in. And what happened in India is a very good example of not only doing the right thing because it is the right thing, but doing the right thing because it is the right business thing. Um, giving back in the way that Deloitte, Tata, FedEx, and many others did in this pandemic allowed us to live our purpose and convince the stakeholders that comprise our organizations that we are a entity that does good. Um, I'll give you one tangible example. 86% of the 345,000 professionals at Deloitte are Gen Zs and millennials. Their number one issue is climate. I recruit about 50,000 individuals globally every year. And I speak at university campuses in the United States, in Europe, in India. Invariably, I'm asked, what does Deloitte do beyond its core profit motive? My point being, if we want to hire, retain, develop the very best individuals, which is certainly what makes Deloitte successful, what makes TCS successful, what makes FedEx successful, I must have a credible response around climate, around COVID-19. It is the right thing to do. It is the right business thing to do. Uh, that's a, such a great response, Puneet. And I, I, uh, having worked with you closely, seeing that in action has been just remarkable. Mm -hmm. Chandra, if I could come to you, because we've had obviously a momentous uh, uh, couple of weeks with Prime Minister uh, Modi meeting with President Biden for the first time at the UN. And, and Puneet was alluding to this a little bit in terms of as we, uh, you know, there have been issues around uh, tariffs and taxation and, and a lot of uh, hope given the recent decisions. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, what do you think these meetings uh, at that high level with President Biden and Prime Minister Modi mean for greater uh, cooperation and collaboration between the two countries, but also at a business level? Uh, first of all, let me say that uh, these meetings are uh, historic and they make a significant impact because they set the tone. And US and India, all of us know, especially in business, they are natural partners and natural allies. While there may be a cooperation and the defense level and any other level, I think business level, in terms of the economic impact that we can make on each other, is just humongous. And these meetings set the tone because both leaders emphasize how both countries can work with each other. I truly believe that India can emerge, I think Raj alluded to this, as a very, very important player in the rebalancing of the new global supply chain. At the group, we are already building a telecom network solution stack, 4G, 5G, and beyond. And we are investing in electronics across the board. And we are looking at a number of other areas. And there are other players who are doing that too. I think in the post-pandemic world, uh, India and US can play a significant role in development of infrastructure in India, in the whole digital area, and defining the complex issues around data. And India has built some of 
leading world class platforms like the aadhar like the uid and so on there are examples but many such more things can be done i see a very big opportunity in education very big opportunity in healthcare these are digital platforms that will be linked to the physical things on the ground um, so i think i think it's a very strong signal and many things will happen and we should be at least aspiring to increase our trade to 500 billion dollars there's a lot of work to do Chandra, from where we are currently uh... Yeah, that's very helpful. I know we're almost out of time. I just want to end with, uh, as my old colleague uh, used to say, a quick lightning round question. If you could, if you could each just give me in ten seconds or less, what's the thing that gives you the most hope as we come out of this year? Uh, I really uh, the next two years uh, as we emerge from this, that would be terrific. Raj, if I can start with you, uh, and then go to Puneet, and then uh, then Chandra. Well, uh, we at FedEx are very bullish on India as we reinvent FedEx at the intersection of physical and digital, and India plays a huge role. As Chandra just said, we think that potential for trade between India and the United States is multi-fold from where it is today. So that gives me hope. Puneet, this is India's century. Great, thank you. Well said, uh, Chandra. Well, in the next ten years, it's going to be terrific. place to do business is india well look th- thanks all of you and i i can as uh, somebody who ran a tv network for 9 years i know how important it is to end on time and not make scott wait too much uh, so uh, thank you very much for all of you and once again congratulations on such a well deserved honor and uh, congrats to uh, to john and mukesh and the team for really leading us through this uh, momentous period thank you all scott back to you <laughs>